happy Pride. I hope it's been a great Pride Month for you guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's Morgan, and if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick little video, uh, and I was inspired by uh, the guys over at What's the Safe Word, and I'm gonna link their channel uh, in the cards and down below. Uh, because I think that they're an excellent channel. Uh, they do a lot of kink education and sexual education. Um, and, and they're just really funny and really awesome. And I really like their stuff. So go and check it out. And uh, thank you to one of my subscribers who suggested the channel in the first place. Um, because I've, I've fallen in love with them. And I watch them all the time now. Uh, but over on their channel, uh, one of the guys came out, uh, well... He's out, but he came on the channel to tell his coming out story. Uh, when I sort of had to deal with my first sort of step in coming out, because man, this has been a process for me. Um, you know, it was it was dangerous to come out of the closet. I remember I had a friend in high school who, uh, you know, told those of us who were very close to him that he was gay. Uh, but we like we couldn't tell anyone we couldn't let on just because he really was was afraid for his own safety if people knew that he was gay um so that was the sort of environment when i first realized that i wasn't you know the sort of straight person that we're all expected to be so I've gone through a number, like I said, this has been a process for me to kind of figure out uh, who I am and what the best label to describe me is. Um, and that's okay if you follow a same pathway, like if you're like, I have no idea what one of these labels works for me, um, that's okay. Like it can take a long time to sort of figure it out. Uh, we just didn't have the language uh, when I was younger uh, and, and knowing that I wasn't straight, but not knowing really what I was, we didn't have the language to describe what I am. Um, and so for those of you who haven't seen some of my other videos, uh, I am asexual uh, and pan romantic. So that means that I do not generally uh, experience sexual attraction. I do kind of fall into that gray A category. Um, I will experience sexual attraction maybe once every few years. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, when people are like, oh yeah, they're hot. Ah, I'm kind of like, I don't understand what we're talking about right now. Um, so it's a little weird. I mean, obviously I can, I, I have a sense of aesthetics. I can tell if a person is like, you know, I, I guess uh, in general, a pleasant looking person or not. Um, but I, it doesn't go further than that other than appreciation where I'm just like, you know, oh, that person is attractive. Oh, that is a nice painting. Oh, you know, like that's a cool thing that I saw. Like it, it all kind of ends up in the same category in my mind because there's no jump from, hey, that person's attractive to, hey, I should have sex with that person. That just doesn't happen for me other than maybe once every couple of years. Um, and that's it. So um, pan romantic, on the other hand, means that I am romantically interested in pretty much anybody. I don't care about gender. Um, I have dated uh, men. I've dated women. I have dated people who are sort of in that non-binary um, category, uh, people that are agender, uh, so that they don't identify with any gender. Um, and it doesn't matter to me because to me, I'm attracted to the person that they are inside. Um, the outside package doesn't really matter. The genitals don't really matter. I'm not very much into sex. I, I'm not quite sex repulsed. I kind of go through phases where sometimes I'm into sex and sometimes I'm not into sex. Um, but it, I, I wouldn't like put myself as sex repulse. I'm simply sex averse most of the time. Um, so like, I mean, I go years without having any kind of sex or masturbation or any of that kind of stuff. And it doesn't bother me at all. And I know that that is like shocking for some people because I know that uh, for some allosexual people, so people who enjoy sexual activity, like, you know, they go a week without and they're freaking out. So I'm, oh, I, I, again, I can't relate to these sorts of things because I'm just like, yeah, whatever, it's been a year. So, <laughs> um, but 
anyways, let's get back to my coming out story. Uh, I knew at a very young age that I wasn't straight, right? Because I wasn't looking at, I, I knew I was supposed to look at boys and be like, oh, I like that boy or that boy, you know, whatever. And that never happened for me. Um, I, I dated guys because that's what was expected of me. Um, and, and I awkwardly experimented with like kissing and, and touching and all that kind of stuff. I knew very, very young that I was into kink. Um, again, I just didn't have the language or the skills to talk about it. Um, because I knew that I enjoyed like playing around and biting. Sorry, Wolfgar is just in the background. If you saw some movement and heard some noise. Uh, but I knew that I was much more inter interested in like biking and, and slapping and hitting and that kind of stuff rather than, um, you know, the, the sexual stuff. It was like, okay, well, I guess I'll like sit and make out with you if you let me kind of like, you know, slap you in the face a few times or that kind of thing. So I was trading sexual act activity in exchange for the things that I really wanted, which was the, the kink side of stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, a couple of years later, I, I had been like living on my own for a while. Um, and this is all like, you know, under the age of 18. So we're not going to get too specific there, but I met a woman, uh, and she was a bit older than me. She was into kink and that was my first experience of like a kinky relationship and also a relationship with a woman um and i really enjoyed it uh and her and i would sometimes you know meet a guy and she would have fun with the guy and i would get to do the kinky stuff and where we'd both do the kinky stuff with him and she would uh enjoy him in whatever way that made her happy and it was a good I thought it was a very good relationship. I enjoyed myself. Um, we didn't have too much of a sexual relationship. Like I experimented there the same way I kind of experimented with guys. Um, and I found that none of it was really working for me. But at that point in time, I was like, well, I mean, like I've just dated a woman and I've been dating men. So I guess I'm bisexual because that was the only language that I had to really identify there. Um, and, and it, this is at a time when, you know, pe like I said, people were afraid to come out as gay uh, because there was still so much social stigma around it. Um, so it was it was kind of weird. And I but I stuck with that bisexual label for a long time uh, just because I didn't have anything better to replace it with. Uh, over the years, I discovered also that I was I was poly. Um, so that was a bit of a harder one to come to than the bisexual thing. When I started telling my friends that like, hey, I'm dating this woman and I'm bisexual or whatever, um, no one really batted an eye because I was already hanging out with definitely alternative crowds and alternative people. So it was not that unusual with, within my group of friends, but I didn't tell anybody else. Like I've never actually told my parents that um, I've dated anything other than, or any one, <laughs> I don't mean to make people sound like objects, but any one other than men, my parents don't know because my parents are very judgmental. I don't have contact with them anymore uh, because of it. So uh, not just because of my sexuality, but because of a lot of other stuff, but uh, they are very old school and very, very judgmental. Um, so we just don't see eye to eye and that's okay. It doesn't bother me in any way, but, uh, it, it is, it is what it is. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, when I sort of started realizing, I didn't realize that open relationships and poly and all this was a thing either because it wasn't something that we talked about. Um, but I finally, I ended up dating this one guy who is still, you know, a friend, um, you know, despite the rockiness of our relationship, we just realized, um, we didn't, neither of us had the language at the time that we were both poly. Uh, so it was like, it was a mess. It was a mess, <laughs> but, uh, he was a great guy, still is a great guy. Um, so no hard feelings there. And like I said, I still talk to him. I still hang out with him every once in a while. I haven't seen him for a while, but you know, like, yeah, we're one of those people that you'll probably always be friends with, you know? Um, so anyways, 
yeah, that was that was more interesting. But that was when people started talking about open relationships. And so it was kind of like, oh, maybe that's a thing I should try. And I found that it really works for me, not only because I do identify as poly, but also because if I am going through one of my phases where I am sex averse, uh, it becomes not very fair to my partner. Now I'm willing to like do some things and I briefly flirted with the idea of um, like I think we've all kind of heard about like stone lesbians and that's where they like to top for sexual activity but they don't like to uh, have it reciprocated and I very much identify with that. I, I have no problem doing sexual things to other people. Um, like I, I enjoy using my strap on. Um, I like, you know, stimulating people in various ways, using vibrators and sex toys and all that kind of stuff. I can uh, find a good deal of enjoyment there, but I don't want it reciprocated in any way. So, uh, yeah, I kind of flirted with that sort of an identification, but I knew I wasn't a lesbian and I didn't know if that label applied to non-lesbian people. Um, so anyways, yeah, poly works for me because that way my partners can get their uh, you know, sexual needs met elsewhere. Um, because I, I've never actually dated another asexual. Um, so that's kind of an odd thing. Um, uh, and I know a bunch of them. I just haven't, it's just never happened. Um, let's see. Oh my God. I'm saying, um, so much in this video. I'm sorry. I'll try to stop it. And I almost said it again. <laughs> So anyways, after the sort of realization of poly, I also started exploring alternative uh, sexual identities. And that's when I came across like pansexual. And I was like, well, that suits me better because I don't actually care about gender, the gender of my partner. I mean, I obviously care about their ability to express their own gender and things like that. But I, I have no problem dating somebody who doesn't identify within that sort of very binary male female or someone who's on the, the trans spectrum or any of that kind of stuff. It's cool with me. Again, I don't, I don't, I, I like the person, um, their genitals, the outside package, any of that kind of stuff really isn't all that important to me. Um, but if I have romantic feelings for a person, that's what's important. So... I, I went with pansexual for a while and then finally, finally, and it's only been a couple of years now that I've been aware of the whole concept of asexuality. Um, and so when I, I heard about that, I was like, that's it. And it was like, you know, whoa. <laughs> Uh, which is weird because, you know, you usually have yourself figured out by the time you're my age. Uh, but I didn't because I just didn't have the language. So, uh, yeah, having that language really sort of was like, finally, I got it figured out. So I come to the this end point of, of gray asexual uh, and pan romantic uh, and poly and definitely kinky. Um, top, dominant, sadist. These are all sort of my, my labels. Um, now coming out with this stuff, because that's what this is supposed to be, is a coming out story, but it was really more of a self-discovery story, and I apologize. But anyways, coming out with this stuff, it wasn't a big deal for me because I hang out in kink communities where we talk about this kind of stuff. A lot of people were shocked or surprised. There's a lot of people who still don't know that this is how I identify. Um, and so when I mention something about it or it like just comes up in conversation, they're like, whoa, what? Um, and I think that's partially because I'm so deeply involved within the kink community. Um, and I, I do all this kinky stuff and people have seen me like, you know, host a class on fisting, uh, you know, things like that. So they're like, wait, what? This doesn't make any sense to me. But I think that also people don't have a full understanding, a proper understanding of what asexual is. They think that asexual means no sex ever under any circumstances. And it doesn't. It's simply talking about attraction. And I just realized that I'm like... I've been filming for a little more than 20 minutes, which will be shorter for you guys. And if I tilt my head the right way, I have horns. There we go. There. 
there. So yeah, I decided I would film here in my living room instead of in my dungeon, just because this was a little more comfortable for me. Uh, so you can see all of Sage's lovely statues and stuff that he collects behind me. Um, but anyways, I, I don't think I really have anything else to say. Just that, uh, yeah, coming out as ace is a little weird. Uh, because it's like people kind of look at you and they're like, so what does that mean? Right? They don't understand. Or they're like, so you had to tell me that you have nothing to say. Like, you know, it feels that sort of way where they're like, so, you know, it's not like you're gay or, or whatever. You just not into anyone. What's the big deal? Um, so I think that there is sort of still a lot of ace erasure that happens. Um, but anyways, I'm going to play some footage that I shot at the Pride, not at the Pride Parade. I didn't go to the Pride Parade because, eh. Uh, I did go to the Dyke March because I love the Dyke March. I've participated in it many, many years. It is one of the, uh, sort of events at Pride that are still really political. And I really like that. Um, because, well, I like that kind of stuff. So I'm going to share with you guys some footage from the Dyke March in Toronto 2017. And I will say goodbye. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you want. If you have any questions about asexuality or anything like that, please leave them in the comments below and I will get to them as quickly as I can. Um, and stick around. Later in the week, we're going to be having a few more videos. Um, I've got the regular scheduled one on Friday, and I think this week I'm going to throw in a little bonus video. So that is that, and I will see you guys in my next video. So have, I hope you had a happy Pride. I know I did. Bye. <laughs>